Oh, <laughs> 
a joy to welcome all of you to our Lord's Day service, and we hope that the service is a blessing to you, and we're so delighted that we can be here on Palm Sunday. The Holy Week services are listed in an insert in your bulletin, and there are several that are offered throughout the week. And then Easter morning at 8 o'clock, we're going to be gathering at the cemetery. There will be bubbles, there will be rhythm instruments, there will be bagels afterwards for all those who come at 8 o'clock. And whether it's rain or shine or snow, we will be up at the cemetery. If there's a monsoon, we might uh, reconsider, but otherwise we'll meet you at the cemetery 8 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. And at 8.30, we'll be back here. The children will have an Easter egg hunt. And at uh, 10.30, we'll have our regular traditional Easter service. It is a delight to have Cindy Steele lending her beautiful voice with us today. This Thursday, we have something very special. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to start a chess club here at the church, and it's for any age. So if you'd like to play chess with someone and get some uh, experience in, we invite you to come here at 4 o'clock for chess on Thursday. And after the service today, I will be in the back along with the Sherman boys, and they will be helping handing out palms to you. Let us begin our worship by standing and turning to hymn number 786, Rejoice, O Pilgrim Throng, verses 1 and 3. page 50 in your hymnals. We praise you, the Lord God of Israel. You came to help your people and have set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, a descendant of your servant David. You promised through your holy prophets long ago that you would save us from our enemies, from the power of all those who hate us. You have shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and have remembered your holy covenant. With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, you promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve you without fear so that we might be holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. By your tender mercy, you caused the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The voice of the messenger echoes from the desert, calling us to prepare the way of the Lord and to make straight path on which he may come. Let us confess our sins, so that our crooked ways will be made straight, and the rough ways smooth. Our, our sovereign, sovereign Redeemer, Redeemer, we join the people of Israel, Israel offering our own shouts of praise and celebration at your coming. Although we welcome you today with the multitude on Palm Sunday, 
We confess we have also stood with the condemning crowd on Good Friday. Our thoughts, words, and deeds have cried, crucify. We turn to you for help and forgiveness. Gracious Savior, not because we deserve it, but because we are forgiven. Save us from our sinful ways and restore us to a life of loyalty to you. Amen. Through John the Baptizer, we hear the Lord's promise, turn away from your sins, and God will forgive you. in order that we may have come to you through the merit of Jesus Christ, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Help, Help us and, and all your, your children, children to respond to the call of your gospel with faith, love, and hope. God of faith, you created humanity to serve and praise you, and even when we rebelled against you, you promised to send a Savior to redeem us from our sins. Strengthen our faith in your saving work through Christ. As you chose the people of Israel to hear the promise of redemption through the prophets, may the people today believe in your good will for all that you have made. God of love, you fulfilled your promise of a redeemer in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grant us the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we may share your love with the sick and the afflicted, with the poor and the homeless, with the victims of injustice and discrimination, and with all who are experiencing times of trouble. God of hope, you comfort us through our Savior's promise to return in glory at the end of time. As we await the coming of the Prince of Peace, let us not despair. We long for you to inspire all the nations and peoples of the world to turn to cooperation and nurture rather than to hatred and destruction. God of faith, love, and hope, to you and to you alone we pray. For you are our God, the only God, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. We're going to be singing antiphonally the Hosanna. Yes. Uh, page 239, and the way this works is men start, we're on the top line, I'll be singing with the men, and then the women will be answering on the second line, and Cindy will be leading them. And so we will sing the Hosanna. We go to page 241, and at the very top, you'll see two dots. That means we repeat. We go all the way back to the beginning, and then sing it to the end. So let us sing the Hosanna together.
Sunday of the month, we hold a very special offering. It's called a Joyful Noise Offering, and it's for a local charity. And this month, it is for Secret Santa, which is a heating ministry in Northern Door County. It helps people with their heating bills. And even when we're out of the season, what Secret Santa does is raise funds for the next season. And it's fully funded. It's, uh, they take no administrative costs out. So the offering for Secret Santa will go directly to them. And there's a, a bin right here that you can put your offering in. Or if you'd rather stay seated, the ushers can come around and help you with that. And our nursery children always lead us off for Joyful Noise Offering. <laughs> We come to that time of worship where we bring our prayer concerns and our praise reports. We want to remember Liz as she mourns the loss of her husband. We want to remember those who are still recovering, Ingrid, Sherry, Kate, Doug, and all of those who may have physical and emotional needs. We also want to uphold the people of Ukraine in our prayers. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we are so grateful that we could once again be in this space singing Hosanna. We're so grateful for your mercy that has kept us all these years. We are so grateful for your love. And we would ask that you would be with our brothers and sisters in need for Liz and Ingrid, Sherry, Kate and Doug, for all those who are struggling with illness. We ask that you would lift them up and grant to them your strength and your healing mercy. We would remember the people of Ukraine. We can only imagine the heartache and the terror. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would bring peace to that region that you would speak peace to the nations, O Prince of Peace. For we ask it all in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our New Testament scripture lesson is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every name in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Our gospel lesson is taken from the book of Luke. When Jesus had come near Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you and as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt who has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord told me to. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks along the road as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud noise for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let's pray. Lord, I ask that all my words and the meditations of each of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, O Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Each gospel that talks about the Palm Sunday story has a little different spin on it. And this one is no exception in the Gospel of Luke. And I want you to hear some words that you might not hear just like that in other Gospels. Now, we know about the Hosannas. We sing about the Hosannas. But did you hear an echo in these words? Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Do you know where you've heard that before? Do you remember way back on the hills in Bethlehem when the shepherds were abiding by night with their sheep and the angel chorus started singing, glory to God in the highest and peace? It's the angel song that the disciples are echoing. And do you remember what life was like when Jesus was born? They were in an occupied land. The shepherds were people who were not in the elite. The shepherds were people who were roundly despised by others, and they were given this angelic pronouncement. You remember the type of life that Jesus' parents had? These were two young people. They were impoverished, and they were given the most awesome responsibility of their lives to take care of God's son. But in that moment, when the angels sang, and then the shepherds ran to greet the, that young couple, all they experienced was joy in that moment. And now we have the moment toward the end of Jesus' life, when the disciples start to shout and they echo the angel's song, glory to God in the highest heaven because they had experienced God's peace. They had experienced God's miracles. They had experienced the grace and the might of God. And in this seminal moment, they had to burst out into singing. But there was one group who did not. And they were the realists. Because life in that time, 30 years or 33 years after the birth, were still in an occupied land. The impoverished were in constant danger. And nobody held a parade in Rome without Roman authority. You just did not do that. You did not assemble. Because the Romans' attitude was they wanted peace and order beyond anything else. And their peace was not the peace that these people were crying and call, calling out to God for. Their peace was absolute order and control. And so any crowd that gathered, if they had not had Rome's permission, were in danger. And so the people who said, keep your disciples quiet, were not jealous of Jesus. They called him teacher, they gave him the name of respect, but they were scared half, half out of their minds because of what might come. The realists knew what was coming. Jesus knew what was coming, but he said, let them shout. For fear, they wanted to hold their disciples back. And I can understand that. But you know, there are times where if we don't allow the joy to come in, even if the circumstances are bleak, we miss so much. Did you catch the joy today when we stood and sang Hosanna? We haven't done that since 2019. Colin has been with us since 2020. This was the first time he was able to play the Hosanna. Because when we had virtual services, that's one hymn you cannot sing without a group. 
And so the thought that we could sing out the Hosanna gave me such joy. There is joy even in the bleakest circumstances. And sometimes, rather than looking ahead to what's coming up, we have to be in that moment of sheer joy. And the only thing that can prevent us from being in the moment is fear. Because fear constricts us. Fear stops our voices. Fear tells us that we mustn't shout out and we mustn't revel because something bad is coming. And something bad might be coming, but we still have God's joy. And so in Luke's gospel, even though Luke knows that this is the start of the walk to Calvary's tree, he echoes the angel's song. And this is what we do. We who know the Savior, we who are liberated from fear, we echo the angel song. So this week, the challenge is, in the mundane, in the fearful, in whatever is happening in our lives, can you hear the echoes of the angel songs? They're there if we can shake off our fear and be, abide in God's presence. Let us pray. Lord, we are so grateful, so grateful that we can be in this space singing hosannas, so grateful for the joy that wraps around us even in the most fearful of times. And we ask, O oh Lord, that we might echo the angel song each day of the week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me as we sing hymn number 343, Right On, Right On in Majesty, verses 1 through 4. all the way home. Do not be afraid. Jesus is walking with you. Amen. Please be seated. Mm -hmm.